Enjoy four times more connection capacity, get powerful and reliable Wi-Fi 6 connectivity for all of your devices, even in high density environments with the Netgear WAX630 Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now I do want to start off this video by saying that this video is sponsored by Netgear. They did reach out to me asking if I wanted to review this product. I said yes, and well, of course, here we are. Now we're going to be doing a review of the WAX630. This is a small to medium business class access point. However, because of we know what, a lot of companies have gone remote and I've actually got more Wi-Fi congestion with all of the smart devices that I have here at home that we're gonna be able to put the access point through the ringer and kind of test the kind of congestion of it. So um, it's got lots of cool features on there. At the time of this video, it runs for about 350 US dollars with the AC adapter. You can get it for $330 if you opt to do uh, just the PoE without the AC adapter, so that's an option as well. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what's included in the box. Then we're going to take a look at how easy it is to set up, and then we're also going to take a look at the Netgear Insight, which is Netgear's cloud management-based system that you'll be able to uh, manage this access point from. So with that being said, let's head on over to the box and check it out. So to get started, let's take a look at what's in the box. Essentially, we get a AC adapter in case you do not have a PoE enabled switch, which I don't have today. So we're using the AC adapter. You've got various mounting hardware, whether you want to mount this thing to a wall or maybe like a ceiling tile in an office complex, you have that option. And then of course, you've got your mounting bracket that will go on the back side of this and you can and mount these to that like so. So there's your mounting hardware and of course, you've got your manual. Um, as far as how the man, uh, mounting works, if you flip this over, you've got this, you're going to line up the slots, rotate it, and then you have it connected to it. And then if you ever need to remove it, of course you want to unplug it, push this little button right here, rotate it, and then you'll be able to pull the access point off of the wall, so or the ceiling, wherever it's on. So you've got that. Now let's take a look at some of the, just kind of like the physical appearance of the unit here. We've got the Netgear inside in the middle. We've got some nice venting on the outside. Very minimal, very sleek design. Uh, we'll cover the lights here in just a moment. Flipping it over, lots of venting for any type of heat issues, which is really good. Um, and then we've got, of course, an AC adapter, which is a 12 volt, 3.5 amp uh, AC adapter. You've got a reset button here and you've got a couple ethernet ports that we'll go over just about now. Um, overall, the weight of the unit is pretty fair. Uh, it's not crazy heavy, but there is, is some weight to it. So whatever you're mounting it to, um, you're gonna wanna have it secured because obviously you don't want this thing falling. So uh, covering the lights here, you've got your cloud icon. This is also doubles as your power button. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense in the Insight app, but essentially this is a cloud managed access point, meaning uh, you can access the app or on a browser, wherever you are, you do not have to be directly connected to the access point in order to maintain it. But once you log in, you have all the information regarding the access point. Bandwidth, clients connected, Wi-Fi, VLAN, all the management's done inside that. And we'll, uh, we'll cover that more when we get to the Netgear Insight setup. So it does come with a one year subscription to the Netgear Insight, and then we'll roll over to a $10 per year per device cost in order to maintain that Insight Premium giving you that management on this unit. So just keep that in mind as far as uh, cost. Ethernet ports, we've got two different Ethernet ports here. We've got the first one, which is a 2.5 gigabit per second and PoE++. So it has the latest standard when it comes to power over Ethernet. And then you've got the uh, number two, the, the second port is going to be a one gigabit and you can use this to backlink maybe to another access point or maybe even to a network switch to uh, expand your network that way. So you have those options as well. Super easy to set up. You've got a 2.4, a five gigahertz and a uh, five gigahertz high and a five gigahertz low. That means that this unit is a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 access point. That gives you eight wireless networks that you can individually control and set up that gives you 12 upstreams and a total of up to six gigabytes per second of total bandwidth. More congestion, this can handle it. In an office space, this can handle it, uh, which is great for small to medium businesses or places where you have a lot of that interference. So this is, that'll be really good for that. Now, uh, this particular unit can handle up to 100 concurrent users and 600 users total, and is rated to cover a square footage of 3,500 feet 
it is backwards compatible, which means if you needed to expand that coverage, you can use another unit just like this or a lesser model. As long as it is a uh, mesh compatible, you can connect the two and expand it that way. So pretty cool on that. So that being said, we're gonna roll over to the actual setup, get through the Insight, show you what the Netgear Insight application looks like and show you how easy it is to get this thing set up and on the cloud management. So the easiest way that I can show you how to set this up is to get it plugged in and get it connected to a switch. While this is booting up, you're gonna to want to download the Netgear app and get yourself an account created in order to get in and modify all of the settings. So. Once you've done that, sign into the account. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my existing account now. And since I've had it set up before, we're going to get logged in. Okay, so you can see that we've got some uh, extra light activity here. We've got a green light and an amber light and in, in blue, which indicates that it's under setup mode. Um, and if you look at your app, you may see the Insight Manageable Devices. You may see it pop up under there. If it does, you can tap where it says unclaimed. And you can start adding the device this way. If for any reason you don't see it come up under here, hit the back arrow. Go to the top right hand corner and tap the little plus sign. And we have the option to scan a barcode or a QR code. That's what we're going to do. Or you can try to scan the network again. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over. You can see that we've got a QR code right here. So I'm going to tap on scan barcode or QR code. And there we go. So you can see that it's automatically found it and we're on our next process as far as the setup. Now from here, you're gonna to want to set up a network location. This is gonna be like a business name. Uh, the cool thing is, is like, a, like a lot of APs, you have the option to segment these under different businesses. So you've got business one and business two. This could be business one AP one, or you could be business two AP one, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a name. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it home, or we'll just say YouTube demo. Then you're gonna set up a device password. This is gonna take control or, or take over any default passwords that are on this device or any future devices that you add to this specific location. So we're gonna do device name password or password, we'll just do, again, YouTube admin, we'll do YouTube admin one, and then we're gonna tap on next. Uh, we'll replace the admin password in all devices in the network, so hit okay. Give it a second to do its thing. And now you can name your device. So we're just gonna call this AP01, just to keep it simple, we'll hit done. Next, the new name for the serial is applied. If a firmware update is required, the name will apply basically when it reboots, we'll hit okay. Now you're gonna set up your very first Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna tap on wireless name. We're gonna do girls gone wireless. That's because I have another network with that name and I don't want to reset all of my devices up. So I'm just going to basically copy paste its uh, information. That way all of the stuff starts to connect that you guys can see under the insight. So we'll do Girls Gone Wireless and then I'll put in the password for it. Once you're done there, you can tap on Advanced Wi-Fi Config. This is going to give you all of your advanced settings. You've got SSID, you have a toggle switch to broadcast it. You can change the band if you want this just to be a 2.4 or a 5 gigahertz or both. Uh, depending on the device, it's automatically going to connect to whatever has the best signal. So keep that in mind. Security, you've got WPA2. This router does feature WPA3, which is the latest security for encryption, which is great for small to medium businesses. When you have other networks, you can use that to make it more secure. You, of course, can view your password. You've got 802.11 WPMF, uh, mandatory, optional. You have those settings. Mac access control. Uh, you can set up different VLANs. So if this is a guest network, you can set it up under a VLAN to keep it isolated from your main network. Tons of different settings in here that you guys can go around and play with. We're gonna go ahead and leave everything as default. I'm gonna tap on save. Set up in progress, we're gonna tap on view devices. This is gonna go to essentially what they call the homepage of the Netgear Insight. And like I said, you can access this on the app or you can log into the Netgear Insight on a browser and also manage the AP from there because it is the cloud-based management. So you can see we've got a blue light here. Configuration is in progress. If we tap on it, this device can stay in this state for up to 10 minutes. So while it's doing that, we can take a look at some of the other stuff on the app. Uh, for some reason, it decided not to name it when I did. So I'm gonna tap on the little pencil at the top and we'll just rename it to AP01, save. Now it's gonna be called AP01. 
You've got View LED Legends, which is really cool if you ever want to know what the LEDs do or the colors mean. You have that option right there. Um, a lot of this stuff in the app right now while it's configuring is going to be kind of useless to us. But once it's complete, you'll start seeing the devices connect and we'll be able to look a little bit more in depth on what those are. Okay, so like I said, it can sit in the configuration state for about 10 minutes. It finally picked up an IP so we can go through and kind of look at some of the other stuff that's on here. Obviously, clients is where everything's going to be listed. You can see uh, an Ethernet versus a Wi-Fi signal to indicate how they are connected to the network. Obviously, if you want more information, you can just tap on it. It'll give you more information about what IP address they have, the operating system, what access point they're connected to, tons of different information, which is really useful to have. Uh, security shows you what type of security that they're using on that specific network, which is really nice. And then, of course, if there's any usernames or anything like that, you have that as well. And then some statistics as well. Uh, anything that's disconnected will show up under this one so you can see that I've got one device that is disconnected. Uh, frankly, I actually don't even know what that is. It's probably one of my smart home devices that doesn't have an actual name. But in any case, you can filter it or you can search for MAC address, things like that at the top as well. Going back, uh, IP, you can see what IP has been assigned, uh, your DNS server, your secondary DNS IP, your subnet mask. Of course, if you want to do static, you can toggle that switch off and do static on there. Wi-Fi networks shows the Wi-Fi network that you initially created as well as giving you the option to create seven more Wi-Fi networks. Uh, so if you want to create the guest network now, this is the place that you'll do that and you'll set up all of the other stuff just like we saw earlier when we were setting up that initial Wi-Fi. Um, going back, we've got usage. Any kind of usage will be shown under here. Because this is so new, uh, not a lot of things have talked back and forth as far as externally, so we may not have any information on utilization, at least for a little while, until all of that stuff starts to kick in. But you can see that we have 12 clients, and it will break it down in a, like a little pie chart via the operating system that they are using, which is pretty cool. Uh, mesh, uh, mesh topology, this is if you have a similar unit or a lesser model that has mesh capabilities, you can tap on this, enable that in the advanced settings, and create a mesh network, which will give you a little bit better range as well. You've got a little gear icon, you can put in mesh mode, root only, extender mode, uh, disable, so all that stuff is right there, which is pretty cool as well. So, Insight has a lot of stuff that you can see, like I said, you can access this via the app, or you can log into Netgear Insight online and have a look at all of the different types of things that it has to offer on there, more at a glance. From here, you can tap on radios and channels. This is where you'll go in to configure each radio band the way that you want, whether you want it on or off, what radio mode style it is, what channel you have it on, the width, output power, all of that good stuff can be modified and managed within this spot right here. So there's a lot of cool features within the uh, Netgear. And then of course, like I was saying, if you have uh, bright LEDs and it's maybe in a room where you don't want them on, you can go in and change those to either off or off except power LED and then save it that way as well. You've got stats. This will show you your transmit and receive data. You've got about, which is gonna give you information about this, the MAC address, country, everything on here, which is gonna be there. Uh, and then you can reboot it from here or even remove it uh, if you're gonna be either adding it to a different network, maybe you're um, retiring it or something along those lines you have the option to do that within here as well. So that's just a quick rundown of what the uh, Netgear Insight has to offer. Like I said, that'll roll over to 10 bucks per year per device. So you'll want to factor that in if you're planning on using a device like this. Now, of course, now that we have everything connected, let's go ahead and do a quick speed test. Granted, I'm right here next to the router um, or next to the access point. So let's head on over to speed test. Dot net and we can tap on go, and we'll see what kind of speeds that we're getting right now. I believe I'm actually connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network. Looks like we're getting about 80, so if we actually bump over to the access point, let's go into the network here, and we're actually gonna change this to a five gigahertz band. We'll save that, we'll give it a second for everything to reconnect and reconfigure, and then we'll do another speed test. So you can see that our lights have indicated we don't have any of these lit up right now because we don't have any other Wi-Fi network um, other than the five gigahertz running. So the 2.4 should remain off since it's not even enabled. So make sure we're connected to this again. 
Okay, we are connected. Let's do another test. There we go. So I have a gigabit connection here at home, so you can definitely see that 400 megabytes on a phone or megabits on a phone is uh, certainly plenty to get the job done. If you have this in an office space where things are a little bit more open, you have uh, you have and it's mounted up high where it's you know can actually cover the area pretty well, then you'll get some pretty good speeds. So there you go, there it is. Uh, that's how you set it up. Those are probably some of the speeds that you should expecting. Obviously, if you have faster internet. Um, or a faster device, you may end up picking a little bit more speeds. So there you have it, really easy to get set up, and so far I haven't had any issues with congestion or reliability of the Wi-Fi, even with all of the smart home stuff that I've got going on, which is really good. So I think Netgear hit it on the head when they marketed this for small to medium businesses. Um, it might be a little bit overkill for home offices just because unless you have a ton of smart home stuff and you need an access point of this caliber, um, you may want to look for a cheaper option as far as that goes. If you're anybody like a MSP or like a managed service provider, uh, even with Netgear Insight being cheap, it still costs. And there are free options out there, so you may want to look at some other options or just compare some other access points to that because even at $10 per year per device, that could rack up and you may have to factor that into your services cost as well. So, so far it's been a great router. I've enjoyed it. I think it's gonna work really well for our scenario when I put it over at the Help Cloud office. I think it's gonna work really well there. But like I said, it might be a little bit overkill if you're just a small, uh, just even just a small home office. Um, other than that, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Uh, I'll leave the product link and information down below. I encourage you guys to check it out if you want a little bit more information regarding this access point. Um, as far as this review is concerned, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know other alternatives. Let me know if there's maybe some testing that I probably should have done or some other features that I should have looked at. Let me know what you guys are looking for in access points, things like that. That way when I do reviews like this in the future, that I have more of an idea of what to look for and what to test to make the video worth your guys' time. In that case, that is all for this video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you liked it, you got something out of it. Again, leave any kind of comments, feedback, anything like that down below. Check it out, let me know what you guys think. Um, and yeah, here's some other networking related videos that you guys may wanna consider. These are Netgear products, but they are not Netgear sponsored as far as those videos are concerned. The top one over there is going to be a cheaper Wi-Fi extender. Maybe you're just trying to get better Wi-Fi coverage in your house. You can check out that unbox, that review of that cheap Wi-Fi extender. And then the bottom video is that same extender, but putting it into an access point uh, mode, very similar to this one, just without all of the cool features that this one has. You may want to look into that one as well. So that being said, that's gonna wrap it up and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>